钢材有阿鲁、弹奏过舒伯特嘅三首钢琴小品，作品偏好 D 九百四十六。多谢你收听今晚嘅美乐同行，祝你哋有一个愉快嘅牛年。我系释家荣，我哋下次节目时间再见啦，拜拜。To be hosting Jazzing Up once again on LTHK Radio 4, where I'll be sharing some of my favorite jazz tunes. Every Saturday night from 10 to 11 p.m. I hope you guys will listen and enjoy. LTHK Radio Four's programs for today are ending now. Thank you for tuning in. Shortly, Radio Four will merge with Radio Three. Radio Four's programs will return at seven in the morning. 香港电台第四台今日为你预备嘅节目已经播放完毕，多谢收听。我哋即将同第三台联播，明早七时你可以再次收听到香港电台第四台嘅节目。It's eleven o'clock. I'm Steve Dunthorne. The top stories: academics unions and the EU question RTHK's decision to drop BBC relays after Beijing's ban on the corporation. Health chiefs play down privacy concerns over the official contact tracing app, and pressure grows on Myanmar's coup leaders at the UN. But China tells the world it's strictly an internal matter. The RTHK Program Staff Union has asked the broadcaster to explain why it pulled live relays of the BBC World Service. RTHK cited the decision by the mainland regulator to pull the BBC off the air for what it called serious violations. The regulator said the BBC's reporting was not truthful and fair, harmed China's national interests, and undermined national unity. The head of the University of Hong Kong's Journalism and Media Studies Centre, Keith Richburg. Urged RTHK to explain. Hong Kong is supposedly still autonomous, you know. First of all, and so a decision, you know, like this seems to have been something that would have been ordered either by the Hong Kong government for RTHK or coming from the top from China and relayed to RTHK. It doesn't seem like the people who make editorial decisions at RTHK would do something like this unless they were under some direction to. At least that's what we would think. Because of the autonomy of RTHK and its editorial independence, I mean, people want to get to the bottom of exactly why that decision was made. The European Union has expressed concern over both Beijing's ban on the BBC and RTHK's decision to stop relaying its broadcasts. An EU spokesman said that RTHK's decision reflected the erosion of the rights and freedoms in the territory 
following the imposition of the national security law and illustrated a reduction in Hong Kong's autonomy under the one country, two systems principle. The Health Secretary, Sophia Chan, has sought to reassure the public about the government's Leave Home Safe COVID tracing app amid fears about how the data will be used. The app will be compulsory for diners when restaurants fully reopen. Professor Chan said privacy concerns are unfounded and it was in everyone's interests to use it. The fact is, uh, all the data, uh, there, there is no issue of uh, data privacy because the data would be just stored uh, in the uh, in the uh, phone of uh, the, the person. So uh, the, there is no platform that collect those data. So that's number one. Number two, uh, if you are a confirmed case, then if you use enough uh, frequent, uh, frequently the uh, Leave Home Safe app, actually uh, it would uh, form a record of uh, where you have been so far uh, in the past so many days. So uh, that would facilitate the contact tracing. Health officials reported 24 new coronavirus cases today, six of which were imported. The Centre for Health Protection's Dr. Chuan Shikwan says half of the local cases are not traceable and they're still investigating some, including three patients who are engineers. The three engineer and uh, one, one is working in the construction site. So the construction site concerned will be closed and some workers will be um, put under quarantine. And the other one, um, according to our preliminary investigation, did not visit a uh, construction site. And, um, the, uh, and the third one visited a construction site on a specific date. But uh, we need to clarify the, ex um, the exact um, contacts during the working. If only visiting, we may not uh, necessarily to close that, um, that site. The United Nations Special Rapporteur on Myanmar has called for targeted sanctions against the leaders of the military coup as UN members consider what action to take. At a special session of the UN Human Rights Council, Tom Andrews called on the international 